So this is part two of the mini series. This part of the series is going to be about converting ISOs to different types of file management to fit into the directories of Retrobat. So let's get started. So the first thing you need to do is go to that bat GUI that I talked about in part one that's going to be very important for this one. So we click on it and we wait till it opens. Now, the first thing you do is locate what system you're going to be using to convert games with. So in this case, we're going to go with, let's go Nintendo Wii. Now, if you click the Nintendo Wii, you can see all these different extensions. Now, those are your different files for your game. So you can have ISO. Not a problem. You can have WBFS. But the ones that most people want to use is the smallest one you can grab. And as far as I know, that is .rvz. That type of file management is very small compared to the WBF because that's pretty much the same thing as ISO. So how do you get it to RVZ? Well, let me show you. So let's just minimize this. Let's go find a ReVorm. Re-ISO, I mean. So as you can see here, I have a Wii Sports WBFS. So I don't have an ISO. I got a BFS. Now some places you can actually download RVZ. No problem. But in this case, I have WBFS. You can also download ISO. I can't tell you where to get any of these ROMs, unfortunately. But what I can do is tell you where to get the converters from. But I have converters up here. And I got to take that WBFS and change it into an ISO. Or oh, this won't work. So, first thing we got to do is go to the Wii Management Converter. Click on one of these two, depending on your computer. I'm going to do 32. Oh, yes. This pops up. Now, this has popped up. Now, you got to go to Drive 1. Go to Add, File. Or you can do Folder if you have a lot of them. In this case, Wii Sports. Go Open. And if I enlarge this, you can see that it's a WBF right there. All you got to do now is click it, hit transfer to ISO. You can also do these ones here, but ISO is what we want. And we can locate the folder that we're going back into. In this case, we're just going to put it in the same directory that it came out of. After you choose it, as you see on the side here, it is doing its thing. It's converting WBFS to ISO. So let's let that finish up. Now it's finished. Now let's close this out and go locate that file. Okay, as you can see, resports disk image. Now we're gonna take this disk image and turn it to RVZ. So again, we're gonna go into our converter and we're gonna go locate ISO to RVZ. Now what this is really is the dolphin tools. So this is interesting. So we actually gotta go back into that folder. So here's the Wii Sports disk image. As you can see, it's really big. It's over four gigabytes. So we're gonna put this in a different converter, but unfortunately we gotta take this all the way to that converter ourselves. So I put it in that folder, the ISO convert folder, and now we're gonna take it to ISO RVZ. We gotta put it in there. Now the first time you use this converter, you're gonna copy this dolphin tool here and put it in here. Now all you gotta do is drag the Wii Sports into the batch script. You can use this one too, but I like using the batch script. And the cool thing is, say you have multiple uh, Wii ISOs, just put them in here and you're good to go. So you just click it, you hit any button, you let it do its thing. Takes a few minutes, up to like five to ten minutes, depending on how many you have. Could even take up to an hour or two if you have a ton of them. But just wait, because what it's doing it's creating an RVZ file right here. Now remember how big this was. This was four gigabytes. So let's wait and see how small it is when it's done. So when operation is complete, it will just say hit any key. I forgot to show you guys that, my bad. But as you can see, from four gigabytes to 750,000 kilobytes. See the difference in size? 4,500, yeah, it's a big difference. So now we can get rid of the ReSports ISO. And be left with that. So now let's move on to Xbox 360. So let's go back to the GUI here and look at the Xbox 360 
extensions that you can use for these. So the Xbox 360 games can use the ISO XEX, and you can see on the screen which ones they are. Me, personally, I like XEX. They shrink them down the smallest, and my system has no problems using them. When I usually use ISO, I usually get told the directory is too small for this, or the file is too large for the directory is what it says. So I like to use the XEX. So let's convert the ISO to XEX now. So in here, I have it. Well, let's go back one. So I have a label of Xbox 360 ISO to XEXE. Sorry, guys, I'm stumbling for some reason. But here it is. Very simple program, right? You don't have to do anything else but this. Click it. Then you want to extract ISO. You can also build ISOs too if you want. But we're going to extract one, so we're going to open it. We're going to locate it. We're going to use it, so this is crash. It's going to go back same into the same file. You can change it if you want. I just say no, just keep it in the same file. Hit OK. This will pop up. Let this finish. And when it finishes, it will disappear. Now it's complete. Now all we got to do is close this out. And go find that file again. Now I know where I put it. So as you see, there's Crash Bandicoot. It's a file right here. It puts it in a folder. It's really nice. I'm going to show you how to use that in a minute too. So we can delete this one. And let's move on to one of the coolest ones I like. PS1 and PS2. So we're going to pull up that GUI again. And we're going to locate the PS1 here. Just a quick note, these are labeled by systems, so if it's SNX, Nintendo, it's all listed on the side here, and then the systems are here. So in this case, we're looking for PlayStation 1. Now, PlayStation 1 can use all these different ones right here. I like to use CHAD, CHD, for the PlayStation 1. And I like to use CHAD for the PlayStation 2. PlayStation 3, I cannot get to work yet. PlayStation 4, it's in development stages, so it's probably not the best thing to use. If I can get one of these to work, I'll make a side video on it. But let's start with PlayStation 1. And this is where the converter gets interesting, because this GUI has a built-in CHID converter. So we're going to push this little CD up here, and it's going to pop this up. Now you can go ISO to Q, Q ISO slash Q to CHID, or chid to bin and cube. You don't want chid to bin and cube. You don't. That just makes the file bigger. You want to go smaller to get more stuff on your hard drive, more games on your hard drive. So we're going to select this, and we're going to, again, locate the file for the PS1. So in this case, I have put it in a PS1 here. Now I'm going to show you. This is in cube form. But if you're looking for ISO, you just click this and go down to ISO. Because it's defaulted to Q for some reason. I don't know why. But you just click on it, say open, and it shows it here, and go convert to CHID, or CHD. And it will do this. And again, when this is finished, it will just disappear too. So I'm going to let it finish, and we'll be right back. Okay, that one is finished. Now let's do a PS2 game, because you already know, again, it's CHID. So let's do it again. So this time I'm going to locate PS2, and again I put it in its own little folder, but this time it's an ISO, so we've got to change it to ISO. And it's just the Charlie's Angel game. And again we're going to go select, convert to CHID. And again it's going to take a minute or two to do, as you see it's not a very big game so it's pretty fast. Okay, that is done now. Now it's time to put the games in the correct folders. So what I like to do is open up two file managers at the same time just to transform one by one. So let's do that. Okay, as you can see, here is the RetroBat folder. So this time we need to go back to ROMs and locate every type of folder we did. So we're going to start with the PS1. And in this case, it's called PSX. So if you can't find the PS1, it's called PS, PSX. So over here is our game. And what we're looking for is the CHD. 
That's the only one you need to take. You take the CHD and you put in the PSX. So now we go to PS2, since we're right here in the same location. In this case, we're taking the CHD again and put in the PS2. And the next one I'm going to look for is the Wii. In this case, it's right there. So now we locate our Wii file. And if you remember right, our Wii file is still in the converter. Now, you don't have to keep it here. You can put it wherever you want after you finish it. But this is the easy way just to remember, especially if you do lots of them. And the next one is Xbox 360. So we find the folder. But before we do anything else, we're going to actually copy the name of this folder. So all I do is change the name and we can drag it from USA or we can just drag it from Crash. But I'm going to do this from USA this time. As you can see, I dragged it too far. There we go. Just like that. We're going to go copy. Now we're going to open it up. And we're going to look for the XEX folder or file. I'm going to change the name of that. Now remember when you do this, you're going to leave the dot E X E X dot X E X at the end of this. Do not change that or the game is not going to work. So we're just going to rename it. And as you see, it's only highlighted the name of it, so that's good. Hit paste. And there you go. You are good to go. Now, we're going to take this whole folder and put it in an Xbox 360 folder over here. So let's do that. Bada bing, bada boom, it's in there, right? Yep. So now we have transferred all the games that we have converted into this file folder. So now let's open up RetroBat and see if we can play any of them. Okay, now we're back into RetroBat, and as you see, we got the Wii here. And I'm going to actually change the theme back to the original theme, because I'm going to, I think it looks better for this. So as you can see here, we're back to RetroBat. I'm going to change the theme back to the standard theme because I think it's just easier to show you guys, in my opinion. So let's do that now. Okay, now we're back to this. So now we got the Wii up here, PlayStation, PlayStation 2, and we got Xbox 360. Okay, so this is going to be interesting. So the next thing you want to do is click this. And as you see, there's a game there. So we did the right thing. And now it's going to ask you to install emulators. Just hit yes. Now this game's up and running. This is awesome. So as you can see, very simple, very easy. Game works just fine. We're just gonna get out of here. And to do that, all you gotta do is hit start and select. So let's move on to the next system, Wii. The game's in there. I'm gonna click it, and now it's gonna do install. The same thing as before. Now, unfortunately, I do not have a Wii Remote to play with, so this game for me is unplayable. Now, I do have a Dolphin Bar. If you want to see a video on how to install the Dolphin Bar and the Wii Dolphin emulator, I will show you here. Now, if you want to know how to do it on here, it's the same process as this video, but how to get to it here to open it up, I'll show you right now. So, let's say you want to config your dolphin emulator. So you can use the Wii dolphin bar or any bar you have that works with the Wii remote. So all you gotta do is go here to RetroBat and you gotta find the dolphin emulator. Click it. And if there's any updates or anything, it will tell you. If not, here's your dolphin emulator. This is the game we put in there. So now all you gotta do is go to controllers and go to down here where it says uh, enable the Wii Bluetooth adapter. Now that is your dolphin bar. 
Uh, and then you just want to keep these on real remotes or you can change the emulation Reva mode. I don't know what that does, but here's the real Reva modes. And these are for your GameCube. You can configure your GameCube controller this way. In this case, it would be the Logitech controller. And you don't have to because what's nice about Retrobat, it's only done in for you. So your controllers are all configured for the systems besides one that I have used, and that's N64. It's not good. You will want to buy a different controller for the N64. So that's how you get to this. So anytime you want to, you know, mess with the emulation, you can do it this way. And this way I would do it for the Dolphin. There's other ways to do it. And we'll get into it in another part of this series. But well, let's continue on PlayStation and PlayStation 1. So let's go back and let's go find the PlayStation games. So PlayStation 1. So as you see, it has missing BIOS. I will get into that in the next section. So if it's missing a BIOS, it may or may not work. Let's find out. So it tells you what's missing. So that is missing. But sometimes, if you hold down A, and you go to Game Options, Emulators, and you got all these other ones. Me, personally, I like Duck Station for PlayStation. Now again, it's missing BIOS. How do you get BIOS? Well, I can't really tell you how you get your BIOSes. But again, this might work with Duck Station after you download it. Because Duck Station is one of the best emulators ever for video games and no. So basically, this is unplayable unless you got that BIOS that you're looking for. PlayStation 2. Again, missing BIOS. Again, it's not missing. So one thing, guys, that I want to mention is I would go through each one of these and install them and you do, can do it here or you can do it through here the one that I will say is the switch emulators will not work because they've been banned so as you can see we'll just try one Emulation is missing. Basically, because the emulator itself was taken offline, it won't work. It will not let you. There are one other emulator like that. It's the 3D NES. It's a paid emulator, so you have to go buy it and install it. So by saying that, if you can find a copy of one of these Switch emulators somewhere online, Google is your friend, you can install it yourself on here. Now, I'm not going to show you how to do that. Maybe in another video if people ask for it, but I'm not going to show you how to do that. So, I would suggest just downloading the ones you're going to use. So, like, if you have a favorite emulator, like Daphne, this is a good one to use. And again, all you do is click on it. Say yes. And this time, you might have to use a mouse, unfortunately. But I, like I said, I suggest just grabbing all of them that you can and letting it do its thing. Now, if you want to see me set up Daphne, I will do that in a different video. Not in this video, but in a whole different video of how to set up Daphne. So, there you guys go. You saw how to convert ROMs, how to add emulators. Next up is... BIOS.